that we want to ask people to stay at home. We also wish to ask people to have social distancing, hand hygiene, and now to appropriately wear face masks. And the county government has, is fully prepared to do health promotion, prevention services, and to offer clinical services to all the clients who end up in our facilities in the public hospitals and we have managed to get all the equipment that we require for now. We don't have enough of all everything that we require, but we are acquiring them as we go along and on need by need cases. Um, we now have two cases in Akuru, one for a 28-year-old lady and a 39-year-old gentleman who confirmed positive yesterday. Uh, both were on quarantine, uh, they were in isolation in their specific homes uh, and uh, by the time we got the results uh, the information reaching us was that uh, there are also other people who may have come into contact with them and that we are therefore currently tracing those people so that we can also put them on uh, uh, quarantine. But uh, you find some of these people when they think that they take a matatu all the way from Lanet come probably take another border border here, go to the hospital, and uh, the resultant damage can touch almost every sector of the community. So once again, for persons who may have um, come into contact and they think or suspect they have come into contact, uh, getting to see your parents, your family, your neighbors, your friends, and so on, becomes a very, very big damage to the society. So we are calling upon all those who are on quarantine and isolation to respect the terms of the isolation so that you're not in isolation and in the evening you want to go and see a friend, you want to meet your relatives, you want to meet your family because eventually in some of the cases you find one person has a web of over 100 other contacts but there are clear cases of violation of the quarantine terms and that puts the whole society at risk. We are currently having a curfew in the evening, but during the day everybody is doing their normal business. So people go to work, we may keep the social distance, but the reality is that um, there are times when there have been major lapses, both in our public transport system, at home, and all other places. So I think also as a county and also looking at what has happened in other countries where the authorities were reluctant to put a total lockdown from the start. Those countries that went half measure, those countries like China initially and also Italy, the results, also Spain, the results were disastrous. Unfortunately for us in Kenya, we have taken a similar path. Where we want to take half measures, where we allow people to be on lockdown at night, and during the day, we are all over. Yet we are being told on the same breath that the virus now is at the community level. So I think our plea to the national government is a lockdown is inevitable. We would rather have a lockdown now when our numbers are within the hundred or so digits than when we are 10,000. So why have half measure when you can go the full hog? The the social structure of our population is such that over 70% of our people are in rural areas where the social interaction is fairly limited. The bigger challenge is in the 30% of the people who are in our urban areas, the urban poor. And I think if we can work together with the national government, with the private sector, we can address issues of food and access to those communities so that we can deal with the issue of food access to those people, the urban poor, and therefore ensure that this thing does not go. It is easier to deal with hunger than to deal with COVID-19. And I think this is, a, this is a choice we have to make uh, as a country because we cannot do a lockdown for Nakuru alone. We have attempted to do screening for passengers on PSV coming to Naivasha, also coming to Nakuru. But as you can agree, it's a porous county. People can come from all directions. So we cannot do it at a county level. This must be a national initiative. 
And uh, I really want to urge the Minister for Health, the President as well, to save the country now than when it will be too late. Because there are also old persons, there are people who are also disabled and so on and so forth. We have uh, done a budget proposal that we hope will go through. And some of the areas we want to consider is a support for those vulnerable groups, wherever they are, so that they can uh, uh, be addressed. But also to say some of these children have family connections, I think this is the time that we would want to ignite them. We also have these scholars, children who come from home, come to the streets and later go home. So we are trying to isolate some of these numbers and find a way of dealing with them. This particular, the lady came from Mombasa. So again, if you had done the lockdown at the right time, she would not have come there. We would have dealt with that problem there and we would have solved it. There are very few ICU beds. If you talk about seven ICU beds, if you're in a situation where you need a hundred, it means all the others will not get it. And that's why we're saying the magic is in the prevention. The ventilators, we have about 12, 19. We also have private sector. But whatever number we get is a drop in the ocean. It's not even 5% of what we may require. And uh, it's also good to note we don't have all the capacity to do testing. The only room available to us now is fast closing. Because when you get cases all over across the entire county, across Kenya, even if you do a lockdown, it will be too late for that lockdown. So that lockdown must be sooner than later. We would really want to encourage that uh, if you are in a family where you have old persons, it's also good to ensure that they remain under some sort of uh, isolation of sorts, even if they are not sick. But this lady who came from Mombasa, one of the things we are trying to investigate is that she came by public means from Mombasa to here in Akuru by bus. Bus has maybe 70 passengers. So how many got into contact with that and how many of the 70 again went to meet others? So it is a total catastrophe as long as there's free movement of people. So our plea to the national government, to the minister and to the president, let's have a lockdown, let's deal with the consequences of food and other issues.